The initial estimates of non-farm payrolls released by the U.S. Labor Department demonstrate how plainly incorrect what we thought we knew about the labor market was. By March 2024, a benchmark change would result in an 88,000 job loss, or 0.5%, in employment levels. The government's data collection efforts are shockingly inadequate you and I could do a better job. This is the largest payroll revision downward since the global financial crisis, claims Zero Hedge. It's also crucial to remember that this took place in an election year and was done in order to falsify the data and give the impression that the economy was far better than it actually was. According to this post from David Rosenberg to his former account, which Tom Lee shares, the Fed should be under pressure to move quickly because, in the last leg of the TET cycle, it raised the funds rate by 75 basis points because it mistakenly believed that non-farm payrolls were 88,000 stronger from March 20,123 through March 2024, based on the QCEW revision. On September 18th, it's hardly impossible that a 50 beeper will work. The payroll adjustments were generally in line with our estimates, according to Capital Economics. It looks that non-farm payroll growth will be slower from April 2023 to March 2024 than first thought, albeit not dramatically, which confirms our prediction that the Fed will drop interest rates in increments of 25 basis points, rather than the more common 50 basis points. Congressman Harris backs Biden's proposal for a 44.6% capital gains tax, which also imposes a 25% tax on unrealized income, as if that weren't awful enough. Trying to even assess the implications for your finances is just incomprehensible you're going to tax capital gains, which is great and well they already do that a lot, but you're also going to tax unrealized gains. Does that imply that unrealized losses can be written off? Does that imply that more individuals will just invest more money, speculate more, and purchase riskier assets because everything can be lost. To be really honest, unless it's an extremely wealthy individual like Elon Musk, we probably won't see unrealized gains genuinely taxed. Even though I'm all for taking chances and think there are plenty of you risk-takers in the markets, if you think we've already witnessed a speculative frenzy, wait until they start taxing unrealized capital gains. Additionally, it would probably create a market where short-term trading is prioritized over purchasing and holding stock in Gates, Warren Buffett, and other influential figures. These concerns would certainly outweigh your negative news. The SP500 failed to post nine straight days of gains. Positive news, the SP500 made 11 consecutive higher lows. This has happened 20 times since 1954, with a positivity rate of 85% and a mean return of 2.37%. If this holds true, the SP500 will surpass a new all-time high. Additionally, we received extremely positive news today via the major story on Yahoo Finance is that Target Profits Target has reduced prices on 5,000 products and is back with a significant profits beat. Due to increased foot traffic, the bargain merchants crushed the Wall Street earnings projections on Wednesday, exceeding them by 39 cents per share. Traffic increased 3% with all six departments at Target. Contributing to the improvement net sales were up 2.7% year-over-year to $25.5 billion versus estimates of $25.48 billion gross profit margin came in at 28.9% versus 27% a year ago, and beating estimates for 28% diluted EPS was up 43% diluted year-over-year to $257 versus estimates for $257 versus estimates. Guidance of $0.95 to $2.35, so they killed it across the board. Guidance did come in a little bit light, though third quarter earnings per share are projected to be $220 to $240 per share, compared to estimates of $224 per share, compared to estimates of $224, so a little bit lower on the low end and higher on the high end usually you go with. Right in the middle, so that's $230 per share. But some people would argue that was a little bit weaker than what we would expect to see given the beat that we just seen this last quarter in Target CEO really just cites more traffic heading to Target as the season for the strength in the business. Which is exactly what Wall Street wanted to hear. We wanted to hear people are going to Target, they're spending money, and not just Walmart. This is alleviating some of the fears that the consumer is just falling out of bed. And there's two things that you may have noticed today about markets number. One is you were seeing the equal weight S&P really outpacing the market cap weighted SP. So what this means is you're actually getting a broader market rally today and I think a lot of that is on the back of Target's earnings, the RSP, which is the equal weight SP, which is the equal weight SP is up 0.62% today. The regular SP is up 0.3%. Well, technically the SPY. So you are seeing a 2x outperformance of the equal weight SP, which is good for your portfolio, unless obviously you're in the big tech names or SPY as a large portion of your portfolio, if not. 
your portfolio is likely outperforming the markets by a significant margin. The Russell 2000 is up about 1% today, nearly three times higher than the SP. The second thing to note about today's markets is that the NASDAQ has gained half a percent, while the Russell has gained 1%. It's a positive day for markets as the SP is up 33% and the Dow is almost at break even. Generally speaking, the VIX is up almost 5% today, and if you know anything about VIX, then you know the VIX goes higher when more puts are being bought on our markets. So actually, the options today are not nearly as good or option activity is not nearly as good in the SP as what you would expect to see. On a day where the SP is up a third of 1%, in fact, there's more puts being bought than calls by a pretty large margin, and that's because there is a good deal of nervousness heading into tomorrow. Because tomorrow is the day in which we really get the most data for this week 8.30 in the morning tomorrow, you will get the Chicago Fed National Activity Index expecting that at negative 0.2%, that's worse than last month initial jobless claims are expected to be 230,000 up from 227. Zero, zero last week. So that's not great, but 230 would still be a just fine number. As long as we're not like 240 plus, I think Wall Street will like it. Continuing jobless claims are expected to step downwards. Well, not as much. Actually, you're expecting this to go up six. Zero, zero, zero. Um, but this is a downward estimate from the last estimate that we had. Okay, so estimates are still, you know, getting placed for this data tomorrow. Uh, but you are expecting only a little bit of a stair step up for continuing jobless claims and SP composite global PMI will be sent to you. SP Global Manufacturing PMI and the total SP Global Services PMI, you expect these numbers to fall somewhat, but nothing very noteworthy. We'll have to wait and see what the actual figures are if they are really low, which is bad or extraordinarily high, which is positive and could imply inflation. Higher numbers will be beneficial for markets, according to services PMIs, even though the headline data indicates manufacturing composite PMIs. Furthermore, the existing home sales for July and the month-over-month -month existing home sales will be disclosed at 10 a.m. Expected results for the Kansas Fed Manufacturing Index and the Kansas Fed Composite Index are minus 10, which is still a very terrible score but not as severe as it was last month. Considering the sensitivity of the markets to economic data and indications of strength or weakness in the labor market, especially concerning initial dress claims, it is not unexpected that more puts are being bought on the SP especially considering that the market has rallied by nearly 10% from those lows two weeks ago. That being said, who can blame someone for grabbing a put or two? Overview of Zoom Urban Outfitters using Wolf Speed and Ulent Technologies tomorrow morning, Nordson Carlisle and a few more enterprises a puppet is made by Advanced Auto Parts. Tomorrow, TD Bank, Weibo and Canadian Solar BJs will all be announcing their earnings. In addition, Cava Workday will be giving a talk after hours. Red Robin, Ross, and Bill.com are a few of the businesses who release their earnings. While none of these will have a big effect on the larger markets, certain earnings like perhaps Snowflake might have an effect on certain of your software or AI businesses. Additionally, I think that a cava might affect restaurants because these industries might feel sympathy for one another. Lance Robert on X claims that global liquidity is rising once more, which should stabilize economies everywhere and lessen the likelihood of a recession. If the long-term cycle is accurate, there should be a large increase in liquidity from this point until 2026. Liz regarding X, Ann Saunders says as Nick Tim House explains on X, the cost of cargo containers is on the rise again, and for some routes like Shanghai it is still much higher.